Hello Statistics students, this is Jamie Amy, and this video is our discussion on section 11.2, which is on contingency tables. A contingency table has a two-way frequency, so it has two variables, um, rows and columns, and the numbers in the table are the observed frequencies. Okay, so two-way table, just like you see here. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four rows and two columns here. Two-way contingency table. We're going to use lowercase r to represent the number of rows. So we have four. And we're going to use lowercase c to represent the number of columns. We have two. The degrees of freedom is calculated by um, the number of rows minus one multiplied by the number of columns minus one. So in this example, it would be three. We can run a test of independence, and that, it, that test is going to check if the um, row and column variables are dependent or if they're independent on each other. So for example, here it's going to check if success and failure is dependent um, on the treatment type. So for example, were these 54 successes dependent on um, surgery? were these 12 failures dependent on that treatment type. Okay. Ch uh, test for independence, it's called. Requirements, sample data is randomly selected. That data is represented in a two-way table. Every cell in the table has an expected value of at least five. Uh, so you may see this three right there and go, oh no, this doesn't have an expected value of at least five. Um, but remember that this table is not the expected outcomes. This is the um, observed outcomes, the capital O. Okay. So to type a two-way table into your calculator, you can't use list one um, and list two. Instead, you're going to have to enter it into a matrix. So I'll walk you through it on the example coming up, but it's basically a second matrix, and then you'll enter um, what you see in the table into matrix A. Then we'll go to our list of stats, um, sorry, our list of tests by hitting stat test, and we'll run the chi-squared test. That's the test of independence. Okay, to set up your null and alternate hypothesis, well, we have right tail test always with test of independence. Two capital H's like you're used to. Uh, null hypothesis is that the rows and columns are independent of each other. And the alternative hypothesis is that the row and column variables are dependent on each other. Flowchart to walk you through the uh, thought process. If your O's and E's are close together, so basically what you observed and what you expected to observe were close, then you have a small chi-squared, a large p-value, and you would fail to reject independence. Other cases, if your O's and E's are far apart, so what you expected to observe was nothing uh, like what you actually observed, it would be a large chi-square and a small p-value, and in that case we would reject independence. Little rhyme, if p is low, independence must go. Uh, to summarize the flowchart for you, p is low, we say dependent, p is high, independent. Okay, so let's try this example. We are asked to run a test of independence on this contingency table. We set up our known alternative hypothesis with two capital H's, sub naught, sub one, independent and dependent. Okay, let's get this data typed into our um, graphing calculator or stat crunch or Excel if that's what you're using. Okay, so let's do this together. Um, hit second. And then one, two, three keys down below second, you'll see matrix. All right, next you need to arrow over to where it says edit. Just like in list one, edit is always where you can type the data in. So edit, and then open um, matrix A. And you're just gonna start typing in the data now. This, this matrix is a four by two. So you want to name it four by two, then it'll um, populate for you there. And you just start typing these in. So 54, arrow over for 12, arrow down and over for 41, arrow over for 51, arrow down and over for 70, 
Carol, number three, 17, and five. Okay, once you've got your observed frequencies into matrix A, then you're going to hit stat, arrow over to test, and I arrow up for chi-squared test, just faster, so it's option C, and go ahead and open that chi-squared test. Uh, this is nice, it reminds you that um, your observed frequencies should be in matrix A, and your expected frequencies are automatically calculated for you. They are in matrix B now, if you wanted to go look back at them and go ahead and hit calculate and you have two things on your output screen you have your test statistic uh, chi squared equals 58.39 and you have your p-value which be careful it's in scientific notation uh, when you see the capital e to the negative 12 it means move the decimal 12 places to the left so our p-value is actually uh, 0 0.110129 so if we compare our p-value to our significance level, uh, it turns out that p is low. And if p is low, the null must go. So we would conclude that the success and failure is dependent on the treatment type. So there is evidence that success is dependent on treatment type. Uh, the test doesn't tell us which treatment is best, but you could check the success rates if you want. Um, for example, the success rate for surgery is 81.8%, and you can calculate that by doing 54 divided by uh, the total number of surgeries. Let's see, 54 plus 12 is 66. So if you do 54 divided by 66, you get 81.8. Let's just check that using the calculators. 54 divided by 66, move the decimal twice, and yes, we get 81.8. Okay, weight-bearing cast, to calculate that success rate, you would do um, 41 divided by the total number, which looks like 92 people went through the weight-bearing cast treatment. 44.6% success with that treatment. Non weight bearing cast for six weeks. That looks like it has the best success rate of 95.9. That is calculated by doing 70 divided by the total number of people that went through that treatment, which is 73. And then the last one, the non weight bearing cast for less than six weeks had a 77.3% success rate. That can be calculated by doing 17 divided by the total number that went through that treatment, which is 22. So 17 divided by 22. Okay, so those success rates uh, suggest that the best treatment is the non-weight bearing cast for six weeks. Uh, here's a visual just to give you a, a full perspective of what you just did. Um, our critical value, chi-squared, uh, was 7.815. Our test statistic was very high. It's way out here somewhere on the number line, 58. So it falls in the rejection region, and that is why we reject the null hypothesis. So reject independence, just to give you a visual on that. Okay, that will finish our discussion on section 11.2. Thank you for joining me and see you next time for our discussion on Chapter 12, uh, Analysis of Variance.